Atia Harmon, founder and executive director of Black Girls of Math. So what inspired you to create the organization? Sure. I have been, this is 2023, so I've been in education since 2002. So it was at oh, 20. Wow. Um, and I've been a math teacher, <clears throat> an assistant principal, principal, and I led a small networks, math, science, and assessment. And um, anecdotal evidence about just the frustration of girls who look like me or those who identify as Black girls um, being interested in math. And then like, veering away. And I was curious as to what was happening because it wasn't that they lacked the content knowledge is. And so I figured like it was middle school that I'm a middle school person. So I thought that they didn't see the representation and it became okay to say, I'm not a math person because there weren't girls that were expected to thrive. So we wanted to create a community out of school time for girls to thrive and feel comfortable in the math space. When did you uh, fall in love with math? Um, at a very early age, to be honest, um, I recall going to the corner store and counting my change before the cashiers and they were like joking and laughing. It was like a second grade. It was a thing that I just, I like a lot of mental math, but it was also at the age, like, I don't want you to jit me out of my money. <laughs> and so I used to always do that. My mother, who I found at the org on her birthday in 2020, she reminded me that in fourth grade. In Philadelphia, I was in a citywide math competition. I, I had completely forgotten. So I think I always had a, a love for it. But also part of this was in high school, um, I got turned away from math probably around algebra two. And it wasn't for competency. It was, I didn't see what you would do if you loved the math outside of being an accountant. And I didn't want to be an accountant. So um, one of my board members says that Black girls love math as a letter to my younger self. Yeah, what is it about your program that helps, you know, the confidence level of uh, mm -hmm. pe kids and men. Yeah, absolutely. I feel like we help the confidence level of anybody that engages with us, honestly. But um, it is, we create a small space. So our highest ratio we do is 15 girls to one instructor. And we start and end with a creed of positivity. I am brilliant. I love myself. I am confident in my abilities. And we go through it. Um, I'm a beautiful black girl that loves math. Um, it's about five lines and we do call and response. The instructors only do it the first day and then the girls lead it moving forward. So what we like to do is ground them in the space that you are, you are a math person, regardless of what that looks like. Because if I was actually to close your eyes and say, what does a math person look like? I don't know if you would look at me, right? So it's like you can show up in that space without being the stereotypical person that was identified with math. We let them think about things different. We let them challenge themselves. We play music. We play playlists. It's like, it's okay. We don't have to get every answer right. I can do hard things. Do you need help? Go to one of your classmates or your sisters and figure it out. And then you come to us. But just that simple sentence, A, it's okay to think about it different. It's okay to need more time. And I can do hard things helps them grow their confidence in the math in a way that's very subversive but very subtle and powerful what has uh the response been um it's been very positive um from all educators students um school leaders teachers people that we're meeting on the street and it's, um i've met people from uganda um london and all over the u.s who have told me trauma stories right math is trauma like as soon as i say math some people just itch Right. And it's like <laughs> I've had conversations with people like I just thought, right, I just thought if I didn't do this, I wasn't a math person. And it's like that's actually a misnomer because math isn't just calculating. And if you right. if anyone from a certain generation had to do those stand filling drills, it's like you're not teaching multiplication. You're actually just teaching people how to memorize. And if that's not your wheelhouse, then you think you're not good at math. We're actually in the UK and other countries, they call it maths. Right. So you have to think about math in so many different perspectives so people can all feel empowered and feel like they can be a part of that community without that trauma of what happened in K-12 education that at times wasn't um, welcoming to everyone or different pedagogical approaches that made people feel successful. What are some of the things you've learned from the kids that are in the program? Um, that math fear and anxiety happens earlier than I thought. 
it happens. Um, so our program and curriculum has access for kindergarten through 12th grade. Um, math is math is math, right? The content hasn't changed since AD, BC, whatever you want to <laughs> name it. But we do the content in a way that's relevant for the girls and their lived experiences. And since 2020, that has evolved, right? So we were all, the world shut down, all of the things, but life has changed so differently with AI, coding, all the digital spaces. Yeah. We we try to keep up with what the girls are interested in. Roblox is, hasn't been going anywhere. So we try to meet them where they are, but we've learned a lot that the girls, they just want space, right? It's I feel like the revolutionary part of our work or the radical ambition is that we are just giving them after school pace to just be, but enjoy yeah. math and have conversations. It's just a safe space, not just, it's a safe space to let them be themselves, which I think they don't always feel that they have. So I've learned um, they know way more than we think they know. They pay they pay attention to a lot of things. Um, in our fall semester with our after school partnerships, they do a social justice project. And our fourth graders in Camden solved homelessness with fourth grade work. Like this is the wow. average, this is the average rent. This is the minimum wage. There's a disconnect. Therefore, people and they also got um, they dug a little deeper and realized that there's more homelessness support for women and children. So most of the men that you see on the street are because the programs are not geared towards them. Fourth graders blew my mind, right? Um, my seventh and eighth grade girls in North Philadelphia did research on gun violence prevention programs and how does that impact that community? Does that reduce it? And another girl there, um, very young eighth grader, did school funding <laughs> and inequity in school funding from Philadelphia and the surrounding suburbs. And it just happened to be something that was settled in PA constitution that they were sued for not legally funding Philadelphia. So it was like, how do you, Whoa. how do you know? <laughs> but like, what made you think that? And it was like, kind of giving them a the space is like their brilliance is always there, but giving them the opportunity to like choose their own path for social justice. We kind of do parameters, but they took it and I was floored <laughs> at their research and their findings. Wow. That's amazing. Yeah. Uh, and I like that you said it's the real life experience. It's not just being in a classroom and all that. And you said they're doing a good job about that. How is that, you know, getting the real life experience of math to these kids? Um, I think that's probably one of our most powerful parts. Every week in our programming, we mm -hmm. also introduce them to a Shiro, right? Mm -hmm. This woman uses math in her career and does X. And we use a lot of videos and things that women talk about their pathway or how they use math. And look, she makes all this money. She might make six figures. She might make seven figures. So, you know, the age old question, why do I need to learn this? Well, if you learn this, this can help you go here. And I've feel again that representation we do that for all women but we try to do our target population first so they can see um and identify and align with that um and a part of that is just the girls just being interested it's just I feel like it's exposure and opening a space and creating a space in which they may have been traditionally ignored or denied that is the power and the feedback for the girls very low stakes, high rigor, high content, yeah. grade level work, right? It's there and they're pushing, but it's in a space where they don't feel like they have to get things right, right away. What do you do to help your own mental health? <laughs> what do I do to help my own mental yeah. health? I have, great, I have a great support system. Um, my tribe is amazing. I try to start my days slower in the morning, right? right? Like do some tea, some yoga, do some grateful, like, what am I grateful for? And then ease into, okay, what's this calendar look like? What's this look like? And then I have very strong boundaries of my team. Um, we silence the, the slack at six. We yeah. we just put up our um, so away messages for today at three. We, we need to shut down. And I try to respect boundaries for space. Um, it's overwhelming to be a founder and executive director. Right. So it's just like... Can I find quiet moments within a day? Can I find something on social media that makes me laugh? But at times it's just like, I need to disconnect because I think people now associate Atia and Black Girls Love Math one and one, which is part of it, right? But it's like Atia, Black Girls Love Math, 
So I'm the same person, but actually a T existed before this. So I need y'all to understand it. And you said you founded the organization in 2020 and then the world ended. How is creating the organization <laughs> during that time? Um, it was actually, I feel like a good advantage because the year that everyone was inside, I was building an internal infrastructure, right? So the Google domain, the bank accounts, the 501c3 status, the programming, the instructional design. So then when people were ready to go back to schools and needed after school programming, we were ready to pitch and go. So it actually helped us build our infrastructure um, strongly that year. And I had took a, um, a sabbatical and was doing consulting and contracting work so I can focus more there. And it was easier to focus when you had to stay in house, right? So <laughs> it was actually an um, advantage for us. What would you say to any girls who want to be a part of the program? Sign up, follow us on all our socials, go to our website and we will connect with you. Our goal, um, some of the work we're exploring for 2024, first we're, we are um, founded Idea conceived in Brooklyn. I moved home during 2020 because it was cheaper to take a year off in Philadelphia than Brooklyn when you think about cost of living, right? Mm -hmm. um, but we um, started most of our work in Wilmington, Delaware, Camden, and the greater Philadelphia area. So we've worked primarily with about 300 girls in this space in different schools or our Saturday Slam program for when we don't have the um, girls in our after school program or, or girls can come to both. But well, I'm excited to share that in January, we're moving to, back to Brooklyn where it was founded, well conceived. So uh, I get to go to my second home and bring the work there with the goal to scale um, probably two cities next year. Actually, DMV area is one of our target areas. Oh, nice. Fall, so I'll be reaching out to you. But also we're looking at exploring the metaverse experience. Um because when we found it in 2020 and 2021, Zoom, 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 are you going to Zoom? And I'm absolutely not. Kids have been on, on Zoom for all day for class. I don't want them to check out. Everyone has another mm -hmm. tech, right? So it was like, let's have an authentic experience. Masks on, six feet, but let's have an experience where people are in the same space. But now as those spaces change and do virtual, we're looking into doing some meta metaverse work so girls can still get the experience nationally or globally. Where do you want to see it in the next three to five years? The next three to five years? That's a good question. Let me think. Three to five. Um, <laughs> definitely want to be in some of the major metropolitan areas that have um, high needs for girls um, and just ex um, scale our impact and provide programming that is supportive, is adaptive meaning like the like i said the content changes was adaptive to the time three to five years will be different um but i definitely want to get into more cities more schools and more programs so that our work can expand and build like a coalition of people who support girls in math and again my target population is because only two percent of black women are in stem careers we're actually expanding that to steam for our girls to feel empowered with the graphic design ai so our goal is to exponentially increase that number. And by doing that, we're enlisting you know, colleges and high schools to help build like an ecosystem of girls who are in math to support each other. And we want to do like national work and just continue to share the love of math. <laughs> How can people reach out and learn more? Um, so our website is blackgirlslovemath.org. We are on social media Instagram, Facebook, and TikTok, Black Girls Love Math, and Twitter is BGLM416.